Mikael Haneke, auteur director of award-winning films such as Amour and Funny Games, despises Schindler's List. Yes, he detests Steven Spielberg's Oscar-winning film about the Holocaust, one of the most acclaimed movies of all time. However, Hanukkah strongly disagrees with this consensus. Specifically, Hanukkah's issue with Schindler's List is that he believes it is an immoral film. He points to one scene in particular, the shower scene, which he views as being especially immoral. In this scene, Jewish women employed at Schindler's factory are sent to Auschwitz. They are stripped and ushered into a sealed room with shower heads. The women are distressed, fearing the worst, but the showerheads end up expelling water, not gas. Here's Hanukkah from the 2014 Hollywood Reporter Director's Roundtable interview, explaining why he views this scene as immoral. Can I a spannungs moment daraus machen, ob aus der Dusche Gas oder, oder Wasser kommt? Ja? Das ist uh, meiner Meinung nach eine, eine, eine falsche Herangehensweise. Sobald ein solches Thema uh, zur Unterhaltung wird, ist es von vornherein meiner Meinung nach schon undiskutabel. Die Nesseln, ich finde einen Film uh, wie uh, ein Spielberg-Film über das Konzentrationslager auch falsch. Essentially, Hanukkah is saying that the reason he doesn't like this particular sequence is because the way that Spielberg directs the scene creates a moment of suspense and therefore is turning the Holocaust into entertainment. We, the audience, know that showerheads were used to murder prisoners with gas during the Holocaust. So Spielberg filmed and edited the scene to make the audience wonder what will come out of the showerheads, eliciting fear and suspense. Hanukkah believes that is immoral. Now, one could argue that Spielberg amplified the dramatics of this scene in order to try and have the audience feel a sliver of the horror that the women in the scene feel. And I would assume that was the intent with the scene. However, the issue lies within how it was filmed. The lights suddenly turn off and then back on, sparking screams from the women. The camera ominously pans to the shower head and then to shots of the terrified women's faces. It sensationalizes this awful moment. Additionally, another big issue with this scene is that, unlike most of the rest of the film, this scene isn't historically accurate. This giant shower room did not exist in Auschwitz and was invented for the film. Rich Brownstein, author and Holocaust film expert, explains how this departure from fact erodes the historical foundation of the entire film. You don't know when you're watching Schindler's List that Jews were not marched into a dual-purpose shower that was hermetically sealed, and that the Jews going in actually thought that they might be gassed. The misrepresentation of the shower scene in Schindler's List is so egregious that it ruins the veracity of the film. In direct contrast to Schindler's List, take a look at how a fairly similar scene is filmed from the 2015 movie Son of Saul. The individuals filing into the gas chamber are out of focus and the camera stays on the main character, Saul, watching him react to the horrific sounds. And when he does go inside the chamber, we don't see the entire scene, just a blurry glimpse of a body and some blood. But those obfuscated images are enough to have our imaginations fill in the rest of the scene for us, without showing the entirety of the harrowing tableau. We don't need to see everything to understand what's happening. I do want to note that Hanukkah doesn't think that Spielberg is villainous for having made Schindler's List, and has said Spielberg meant well, but it was dumb. And Hanukkah isn't the only director to have an issue with Schindler's List. Director Claude Lanzmann, who made the acclaimed Holocaust documentary Shoah, called Schindler's List a kitschy melodrama and a deformation of historical truth. And when someone once suggested to Stanley Kubrick that Schindler's List was a good representation of the Holocaust, Kubrick commented that, Think that's about the Holocaust? The Holocaust is about 6 million people who get killed. Schindler's List is about 600 who don't. I personally don't totally agree with Kubrick's complaint about the film, but it's not a wholly inaccurate characterization of the movie. However, while there are these valid complaints and issues with Schindler's List, it also can't be denied that the film has been very successful in helping to educate people about the Holocaust. Due to Spielberg's storytelling, it was the fourth most viewed movie worldwide in 1993, and it continues to be far and away the most widely seen film about the Holocaust. So while it definitely isn't perfect in every aspect, it generally gets things right in terms of major historical facts, the tone of the film, etc. Additionally, it's also far from the most immoral film about the Holocaust. Life is Beautiful has also received similar critiques and, in my opinion, is a much more problematic film. Life is Beautiful is an Italian comedy drama by Roberto Benigni. The second half of the film follows a Jewish father and son being sent to a concentration camp, and the father trying to distract his son from the horrors around them. 
It sanitizes the Holocaust in its depiction of the concentration camps, referencing the horrors of mass extermination but never presenting the brutal reality. Legendary Jewish comedian Mel Brooks tore into the film, saying Roberto Benigni's comedy Life is Beautiful really annoyed me, a crazy film that even attempted to find comedy in a concentration camp. It showed the barracks in which Jews were kept like cattle, and it made jokes about it. The philosophy of the film is people can get over anything. No, they can't. They can't get over a concentration camp. Additionally, Spielberg viewed any money made from stories of the Holocaust as blood money, and therefore refused to receive any salary or profits from making Schindler's List, and donated his foregone earnings to Holocaust education organizations. Benigni, on the other hand, didn't forfeit any salary or earnings and made no similar donations. All that being said, people for some reason really respond to Life is Beautiful, and, like Schindler's List, it's also in the top 30 highest rated movies of all time on IMDb, which is wild to me. Unfortunately, problematic Holocaust films are still being made, such as Taika Waititi's 2019 film Jojo Rabbit, a film that was, for some reason, very keen on noting that there were nice Nazis too. Hey, it's okay, kid. Very cool. Definitely something we needed. While the moral issues with films like Jojo Rabbit and Life is Beautiful are a bit clearer for me, I personally don't know exactly where I land on the morality of Schindler's List. I agree with Hanukkah that the shower scene is overly dramatized, and parts of the film lack moral consideration. However, I'm not sure how to assess the film on the whole. The movie has its faults, but the film has been a large net positive to society. One example of its impact is that the film created increased interest in the city of Krakow, where the film is set. So the city of Krakow bought Oscar Schindler's enamel factory in 2010 to create a permanent museum exhibition that chronicles the German occupation of the city from 1939 to 1945. Additionally, while producing the film, Spielberg also created the Survivors of Shoah Visual History Foundation, a project which filmed interviews with over 50,000 Holocaust survivors to record and preserve their first-hand testimony. For that alone, I feel it's best to forgive Spielberg for his minor indiscretions. There were many, many stories that needed to be told. That's how the Shoah Foundation began. My first goal was to deny the deniers who had been saying on many, many occasions the Holocaust never happened. As we are still dealing with Holocaust denialism and a worldwide surge in anti-Semitism, it's good that there are films like Schindler's List that promote education about the Holocaust, even if they are less than perfect films. One final note, if anyone is interested in a moral film about the Holocaust, I mentioned it previously, but I really do highly recommend checking out Son of Saul by Laszlo Nemesh. It's not an easy watch, but it's unbelievably compelling, honest, visceral, and well-made. I'd also recommend Alain Resnal's documentary Night and Fog. It's only 30 minutes long, and it's the one film that Hanukkah highlighted from that 2014 interview that he thinks is a responsible film about the Holocaust. Thanks for watching. If you like and subscribe, it really does help a smaller creator like myself. I'd love to get to 30,000 subscribers. You can follow me on Letterboxd. See you next time.